Hi guys, in this video I will provide an introduction to databases. Databases are often categorized into the two most common types, relational databases and NoSQL databases. In this video I will only focus on relational databases. Now, what is a database? A database is a large collection of data. This data is stored electronically and accessed through a database management system. The database management system here on the right is used to insert data, to retrieve data, to modify the data, or to delete data in the database. Now, a relational database consists of tables. Here's an example of a table. This table stores student records. It has four columns. ID, first name, last name, and date of birth. And it has five rows. Rows in a database are often referred to as tuple. A single tuple here is, for example, ID 3, Carl Miller, born on April 24, 2003. Now, each tuple in a table has to be unique. There cannot be two tuples that are exactly the same. In order to ensure uniqueness, a primary key is used. The primary key uniquely identifies each tuple in a table. Now, the primary key is many times a single column, but it could span multiple columns. It could even span the entire row. But obviously, that's not really ideal. It's much more easier if we have a single column, a single ID that can be used to access and retrieve a single record. Now, in this example, the primary key is auto-generated. It's an integer that gets incremented each time when a record is entered. But it doesn't have to be this way. It could also be uh, the social security number or the student ID number that is unique and that is not always incremented by one. Now, a database obviously consists of many, many tables. Here's another example of a table that stores courses. In this case, the table has four columns, number, name, credit, and department ID. And the number here is the primary key. CS1 uniquely identifies the course Intro to Computer Science, and Math 23 uniquely identifies the course discrete mathematics. Here's another example. Um, here are departments. The department IDs is the primary key, the name of the department, and at the bottom again is the table with courses. Now, the tables are not just alone and uh, doesn't relate to each other. In fact, many times some data in one table relates to data in another table. Hence, the reason for relations. These are the relationships between the data. In this case, we have primary key in the department table, as an ID here, and the primary key in the course table, as I mentioned, is the course number. There's also the concept of foreign keys. Foreign keys draw the relations between the data and tables. In this case, the course CS1 is offered by the department 9, which is a foreign key, and this ID refers to the primary key in the department table. Here, it's the department computer science that offers this course. Now, whenever we have a foreign key directly as a field in a tuple, it's a one-to-n relationship. Here, the department can have a single department can have n number of courses that it offers. And a course cannot belong to more than one department. So a, a course always belongs to a single, to one department, but a department can have n number of courses, hence a one-to-n relationship. It is possible to have a n-to-m relationship. In this case, what would happen is we have two tables, for example, student and course. And in this case, 
any number or a certain number, a limited number probably, of students can take a course. And the course can be, um, and a single course can be enrolled by many students. In this case, what happens is we have a separate table for the foreign key. Here, it's the table enrollment. It refers to a student ID, and the ID here references the primary key in the student table. And the course number is the primary key on the course table. So as you can see, student one and two take the course CS1, but student two also takes the course Math, math 23. So this shows you an N to M relationship. Student ID is used multiple times. The course number can be used multiple times. This would not be possible if we had the foreign key directly on the course table, because then we could only have a single student taking that course. Now, whenever we perform operations on the data, these operations are wrapped into transactions. A transaction is a sequence of operations that is performed as one logic action, as one unit of work. And that means either all the operations of a transaction are successful. If one of these operations fail, all the other operations have to be rolled back. So it's either all operations are successful or we don't perform any. Now, in the concept of transactions, the asset properties often come into play. Asset stands for atomicity, consistency, isolation, and durability. Atomicity means what I just mentioned, that all the operations of a transaction are performed as an atomic unit of work, a single unit of work. It cannot be broken down into smaller pieces. That means either the entire transaction is performed or it is not performed at all. Consistency means that we have a consistent database state to begin with. When we perform a transaction, we leave the data in a new consistent state. Isolation means that a single transaction does not know and is not aware of any other transaction that is happening concurrently on the data. It just looks as if the transaction is just happening just by itself. Nothing else is being done on the database. So it always happens in isolation of any other transaction. And durability means that after the transaction completes and commits, the data is stored durable. It cannot be lost. The changes that were applied in a transaction are durable. I hope this gives you an idea and an introduction to databases. Thank you for watching.